afternoon, everyone, and welcome. This is Melissa Arma with the Stock Swoosh, and I wanted to review the SPY. And here we have it, a beautiful gap up, another beautiful bullish gap in the market. We have had three bullish gaps in the last three days of the market. We have 100% retraced the drop-off that happened, the sell-off that happened Friday of last week and Monday of this week, and we did it in no time flat. I mean, literally, we flipped completely. In fact, I'm we're even, we're even up here after hours, I think a little bit. Well, let's just say we closed at 209.50. No, we're down a little bit. Here we were up at 53, 433. So this is terrific. I don't know how we start off July. Tomorrow's July 1st, but I know that this is absolutely exactly what the market needed to do. The market needed to recover from that drop off very quickly. And I knew it when I saw Monday, not, not Friday. Friday was really a neutral day the way I looked at it. Now we were bearish. We were bearish on the day we gapped down, but the way we traded on the day because we rallied up huge and then fell into the close was really neutral. But the gap down on Monday, I mean, that was, there was selling that happened. I mean, I looked at it and I said, well, I guess we'll have to see what happens. And over the weekend, I said, this is gonna be a very interesting week for the market. In fact, I said, this is gonna be a big week for the market. I said that over the weekend, after the gap down that happened on Friday, after the sell-off, I said, it's gonna be a big week for the market. What did we do? Let's just look at the week, because I don't think tomorrow brings really necessarily anything. It's gonna be a light trading day and low volume and a day for people to take off trading right before the holiday of July 4th. But it was a big week for the market. We retraced the gap. We retraced it. It was, it's almost as if it didn't even happen. Because really, it's almost as if it didn't even happen. Because we closed. This is Thursday night. Now, just listen here. This is before the Brexit vote came out, which was not as, as expected, okay? We closed that night at 210.81. Where are we today in the close? Well, let's just, let's just look at the high. 209.57, okay? Look at this. This is amazing. It's like a dollar fifty difference, which is next to nothing in the spy. So, we it's it's really almost like it didn't even happen, <laughs> except for except for people panicked and sold. People panicked and sold in these two days, and there were triggers that were hit because we came on a fell under two hundred five and two hundred as because uh, really we were down at one ninety eight sixty five here on Monday at one point below. I didn't want to see us get anywhere near this number in here. This number in here was very important for the SPY, and I really didn't want to see us. I really, really, really didn't want to see us completely retrace in here. Just didn't want to see it, and we didn't do it. So the bottom line is that we are set to make the brand new all-time high. If we get over 213.78, that was the last number. It was more than a year ago now. You know, I thought we'd do it here. Of course, no one could expect that this would have happened here with the Brexit vote. So. You know, the market looks higher. That's the best prediction that I can give. This activity in the last three days is extremely bullish. To gap up and hold every day in the last three days. It was a gapping up that made the buying come in. It rallied. Gapping up here and buying came in, rallied. Gapping up here and buying came in, that rallied. Huge, big, bullish gaps with big rallies. It's buying. This is institutional buying. And on the day this happened here, I talked about it in the room. I said, the only way we're going to get up and out of this the only way is with a gap up and, 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 and buying, and real buying. And I said, beware that institutional money will come in at any time and buy the market up if it wants to support it. And that is exactly what happened, not just in the live day in the last three days, but in the gaps too. And I kind of joked and said, you know, banks rule the world, meaning that the banks are in the market long. So if they want to support it after the drop off, then they will buy back in. That's exactly what happened. So a beautiful bullish week after all for the market, despite the drop off on Friday and Monday, because this really was selling that happened on Monday. I mean, it was, and then we could have just fallen off the planet. We could have, the only way we're going to get out of it is a gap up, which happened here on Tuesday. And, and then a beautiful gap up here on Wednesday, follow through. And another beautiful gap up on Thursday, more follow through. I mean, what more could you ask for from the market? In fact, let's just look at the rally of the move. And from the low on Monday morning, this is the move that the market had, the buying that came into the market this week. Now, just listen to what I'm saying. The low here on Monday was 198.65. High was 209.57. Let's just be 100% exact. Well, let's take the close. What did I say? The close was 209.50. And this is just Monday through Thursday. 
I'll just be 100% exact here. The market ran up $10.85 in the last, from really the low on Monday, you see the time that was hit, until the close today. When was the low on Monday hit? Let me just see the time. That's a big, that's a big move. That's a big move after that drop off to happen, people. 3.15, we retested the low. So from 3.15, closed 45 minutes into the close on Monday night. So basically 45 minutes into the close on Monday. And then after hours, Monday night into Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, into the close. The market rallied up almost $11. So really, really, really nice move here in the market. Just a show of strength. Uh, an, an incredible show of strength. And so, you know, as everyone knows, I prefer to short, I like to short, but I'm very good at reading things in the correct direction, whether they be longs or shorts. And in the case of the market, I have not seen this market be a short. I've never seen this market be a short in the overall longer term trend. So look for follow through here. I don't think we look see much of anything activity tomorrow. We'll see how the week of the month starts out really in July, the first full week next week. Actually, we're closed Monday, so it'll be Tuesday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday next week. We'll see what the market does, and we'll see you know, when exactly we're going to get over this high. I, I don't know if it's in July or not. I hope that it is. It looks like it's going to attempt it. When I talked about it here before, I said, you know what? If we get back over anywhere near this area after this, after this pull in here, we're going we're gonna to get over it. I really don't think we get back up here and not get over this area. In other words, we could get up over this area, retest it, pull back in again, slish slosh around, I don't think it's going to happen. I think we get back up here, we're going right on over it. Right on over it and look for the short squeeze to happen over some of these bigger numbers. And some people shorted the market uh, Friday into Monday and even on Monday, probably into the close, thinking follow through lower. And there are people short this market, but I, have, I haven't seen this much buying. Let's just look if there's even anything remotely like the last three days. If I can just, let's just go back the last two years. Because I can't remember my mind seeing something like the last two years. This is kind of close. Well, no, it's not because it was a gap down. No, nope, that doesn't even count. Well, this could kind of be something like it. And actually, this was close to where we hit up over the high. This is when we hit up over the high in 2014 got up almost to 213. It was a big day here, a gap up, and a big move on this day. And this was a gap up here. This is, no, this isn't even as good as what we saw the last three days. Let me just, let's just go back, let's go back five years. I just want to try to see if I can find any bullish activity in a three-day span that looks anywhere near like what we just saw. Maybe. This is February 2014, sort of. Again, really not as bullish as what we just saw. That's the closest thing I can see. This is a very bullish move in the market to have this week after that drop off. It's not just it's not just the fact that it dropped off. It's it's the fact it's it's two things. One bullish activity even if we hadn't dropped off. We just if we had acted like we did the last 3 days, that would have been considered bullish no matter what. But after the fall off to recover like that, extremely bullish people. I mean, that is a feat of strength if I've ever seen one. No, but this are back to 2012. Let's go all the way back to 2011, see if there's anything. The activity in the last three days is the most bullish I've seen in the, I've seen, yep, 2009, wow. So there it is, people. It's, I just went back in the chart trying to see something that even remotely coincided with the kind of bullish activity we saw in the last three days, and there's nothing, nothing going back to 2010 at least. So the market's higher. This is, this is real money. It came in and buy, bought it. It's continuing to buy it all up through. So as I've been predicting, the market is gonna hold the uptrend follow through higher, and we'll see where we go. Have a great holiday weekend, everyone. Email me at melissa at if you'd like to sign up for the Golden Gap class, and have a great day, everyone.